Give the Lord a praise offering. Amen. It's a great time of
Yes, let's pray. Our Holy Father, what a privilege it is to come tonight and lift up to you. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in each and every one of our lives. We thank you, Lord, for each and every thing that you do in, in all of our lives, God. We pray that you would, right now, that you would just calm our hearts, help us to remember the sacrifice that you made, the way that you've shown your love to us, the love that is indescribable. Allow each one tonight, each one of us tonight, to recognize that, to truly know that in our hearts. That you came here as a child, lived as a man, and put yourself on the cross for us to be united with you. Lord, we praise you for this night. We praise you for our lives and what you've done for us. We pray that you would be with us and the message as it is presented. We pray, God, that it would reach into our hearts and change lives tonight. We pray these things, Lord, in your name. Amen. Amen. Now, while you're standing, find two or three people and tell them that you're glad to see them here this Christmas Eve. And when you hear the music starting, we're going to come back to see <laughs>
Just worship. Just worship Him and give Him thanks. Amen. Just worship Him. We've been singing a chorus around here for the last few weeks, and it's called Worthy of It All. And I was just sitting with that today when uh, I was getting ready for tomorrow, and uh, you know, he's worthy of it all. Like, even if you're going through a challenge, he's worthy of it all. Like, difficulties, he's worthy tonight, you know? And it's not, we don't make him worthy, he is so worthy of it all. And he's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of us, whatever we give him tonight. He's so worthy of it. As a matter of fact, we probably can't give him enough tonight. He's so worthy of it all. He's so worthy of our lives. He's so worthy of, of every moment he's been given to us. He's worthy of it all. And, and it begins with us, I guess, coming to the place of understanding that he gave himself all to us. So we give ourselves all to him because he's worthy of it. Amen. We, by the way, don't you think we give ourselves to a lot of things in this world? We give ourselves to a lot of things in this world. But the question is tonight, do we give Him worthy? Who is worthy? Do we give it to Him who is worthy of it all tonight? Remember that. He's worthy of every breath that comes out. He's worthy of every song we sing. And even if we're flat. You know, I, I've had some people in my praise team and in my cars, they are flat. But you know what? It don't matter. Because he's a worthy of flat, right? No, I love it when people sing with all their heart. And so tonight, remember, he is worthy of it as we come together. And that's why we adore him. And that's why we sing his praises tonight. Amen.
I generally can't get through it because it's where we ask God to be near us and to love us. And it's just such a beautiful prayer. So really take this verse 3 to heart right now. Come 
out on truly the best gift that we've ever received. Because you are the gift, number one, that changes everything, but it also, God, you're the gift that keeps on giving from a thousand generations for your children and your children's children, Father. We honor you and we bless you and we praise you, our sweet baby Jesus. And we praise you, God, for the cross that we'll be celebrating in the next couple months, Father. We love you so much. In Jesus' name. Thank you for being with us tonight. And Lydia Decker, will you come at this time? And we've asked her if she would just share God's word with us tonight. I'm so excited for what God is, is going to do. And uh, I hope you caught that last song. We, we sang it for you, for Jesus, from Jesus. It's there's no striving, there's just abiding. And uh, that's what he's always meant, always meant Christmas to be a, a time of not striving, but abiding. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to pray. Prayer has already went forward. But God, we thank you for this night. We know that you are the reason for the season. God, oh, God, we thank you. We thank you for your goodness and your kindness. You've been good to us all year long. We're about to close out a year, and it's been you, God. We thank you for everyone present here today, tonight. God, we give you glory and we give you praise. God, we ask you to do what you want tonight. Say what you want in Jesus' name. Have the right of way in Jesus. Lift up the bowed down heads. Undo the heavy burden. Set the captive free. God, we thank you in advance. We thank you for this season. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're going to do out front of us. God, our eyes is on you. We look to you. We hope in you. We thank you, God. For this church, hallelujah, we thank you for our pastor, we thank you for every member and what you're going to do through us in this coming year. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So I'm going to introduce myself. Um, my name is Lydia. Um, I'm originally from Illinois, and we came here at the beginning of 05, right? And God had led us here. He didn't check with you. Is it okay? You know, we had talked about Arizona. But when God get ready to root you up, he don't check with you. Hey, I'm going to mess up your life. Is it okay? You know, not mess it up. But God in his mercy know all things, right? So he put Arizona on our hearts at the beginning of 05. And we told him, yes. Um, my, I grew up, uh, my, my father was a pastor. My mother was an evangelist. And I have seven sisters and brothers. I have my two daughters out here and her husband, Sarah and Jake and, and um, Rachel and my sister Jean that came to be with us tonight. We, we thank God for this opportunity to be here. We thank God because he's been good to us all year long. And I was thinking as I was praying about God, what should I share? What should I say about the, uh, the birth of Jesus and so many thoughts came to my mind as I began to pray and ask God what it is he wanted the people to know and I my mind went back even in the beginning and uh, the scripture came to me um, when Jesus said lo I come in the volume of the book uh, before men ever sinned before the, uh, he created Adam he knew he had a purpose he had a purpose for us. He knew what was going to take place. He knew all things. And so God, in his wisdom, prepared, a, in, uh, Jesus said, prepare me a body. You know, and Jesus knew that he was going to have to come down through 42 generations to redeem us back. You know, he, he could have came as king. He could have grew up. But God always had a plan. You know, he came in a manger. Uh, that was for a reason. You know, God always have a plan before the foundation. He said he chose us in him before the foundation. He knew uh, us before I, we knew ourselves, right? So I, I began to ask God what it is he, needed, he wanted to share. But God wanted me to let you guys know that 
he, he, he knew us before Amen. our birth, all right? He chose us in him before the foundation. He's seen our unformed bodies before we came to be. A history about us has already went forth. He gave us his word. He didn't create us and say, good luck. I hope you make it. He gave us his word, right? He so loved us. God so loved us that he sent the son. In the beginning, though, um, he hadn't put on flesh. The counsel of God came together and said, let us go down and make man in our own image after, after, my, after his likeness. Yes. So he began from Genesis to Revelation. Yes. To, uh, the, the type of Jesus, I'm not, it takes so long to go through that. But from Genesis to Revelation, Jesus had purpose to come and to die for us. Yeah. He could have, you know, we, we talk about the death, the burial, and the resurrection. He could have even on the cross, you know, when they came to kill him, he said, wait a minute, you don't take my life. I lay it down and I'll pick it back up. And Jesus is coming for us again. You know, he said, he will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, the dead in Christ is going to rise first. So he came down through 42 generations because he saw us. He saw our depravity. You know, he saw us as human beings, what we would be. He know all things. So he want us to trust him. He don't want us to lean to our own understanding. So I'm going to read this before I get into the story. We're going to take our text from... Matthews the 18, I mean Matthews 1, 18 through 25. Let me slow down. Um, and we will also examine Hebrews 10, 1 and 1, uh, 10, 1 through 10. And we will also look at St. John 1 and 1. And in St. John 1 and 1, it says, In the beginning was the word. So Jesus was in the beginning with, with God. He hadn't put on flesh yet. But they all, there was a plan for mankind already. So it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him there was, there was nothing made that was made. So down through history, the birth of Jesus has been um, talked about, debated over the years, that, you know, whether He... But he's the son of God. It's been debated down through history. And it's a non-negotiable that Jesus was born. Had he not been born, we would still be in our sins. We would still be lost. He had to come, right? So he walked down through 42 generations to buy us back. He loved us so much that he took on all of the thing, I mean, all of the sin and the shame. Was, uh, being on the cross for us. He came for us. He didn't, you know, we, uh, when I was growing up, uh, you know, many times they talked about uh, uh, the birth of Jesus and how he came. And I personally wanted to know the Jesus of the Bible. I heard my mom talk about it. I heard my father talk about it. So I got on pursuit to know Jesus. I got saved at 13. And I wanted to know what, I wanted to know the God of the Bible, right? And so I got into it. It looked like the words of the of the, uh, the, the, the words of the Bible came alive. And how I I was just looking at how he loved us so much we can't even comprehend how much he loved us. So I studied. I wanted to know. I, and I know what Abraham I know, and I read Isaac and Jacob and all of those Genesis extra. But I wanted to know it for myself, right? So, so many times people can tell you about Jesus, but you won't be the same if you experience the, the Jesus that we're talking about. Amen. That he came in a manger. He came, you know, um, Matthews talked about him. Uh, Luke talked about him. And their stories have been debated. But I wanted to know about the Jesus that we talk about. The Jesus that we praise God for, right? So, you know, oftentimes we come to church. I don't want to just come to church, check a button, no. I want to know Jesus and the power of his resurrection. So as I begin to get into the word, you know, um, and read how the Bible says, if we come to him, he will in no wise pass us out, he will receive us. So all of us today, uh, 
we, 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 we can experience his birth. We can experience the realness of Jesus. We can experience what he done on the cross. Right? So I, I just thank God for this time. I, I thank God because he's real. He's consistent. He don't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He keeps his promises for us. He's not slack concerning his promises. So as I looked at this, um, as he was born, Jesus was on the run for two, two years. I did not know that. As I looked at this, they were trying to kill him even as a baby. But he came, and he, they couldn't kill him because it wasn't time, right? And so he, they, they tried to pursue him. They did everything they can do to stop, or the enemy did everything he can do to stop the Savior from coming. But because it was prophesied over centuries that he would come, um, Isaiah prophesied, and she shall bring forth a son, and we will call, they should call his name Jesus, and he shall save his people from their sins. So as we um, acknowledge God, and as we seek after God, and not just, you know, um, go to church, you know, just a, a pattern, or God wants to have relationship with us. He wants us to, to know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. So as I begin to look at this, in the beginning, he said, prepare me a body. This was in the beginning before he put on flesh. And when the council of God came together, he said, prepare me a body that I might go down and redeem men. I'm going to read that right now. It says in uh, Hebrews 10 and 7, well, I'll start from 10 and 1. For the law having a shadow of things to come, not the very image of the things, can, can neither those things offer, they offer sacrifices year by year. And verse 2, for then would they have not ceased to be offered, because the worshipers, once purged, should have no conscience of sin. So right here we're saying, Year after year in the Old Testament, they tried to find a way to take away man's sin. They offered up bullocks and goats. They would have to go into the temple to try to find, to find them, and they would have to do this year after year. But Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. No longer did they have to go and try to offer up bullocks and goats. He said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. So Jesus was the sacrifice once and for all for us. You know, so, but anyway, I, I just thank God for what he's done for us, that he died for us. He took on our sin. He took on struggles. Whatever we have, we can bring it to him. We can come to him. He said, come to me. Come without money. Come without price. God wants to do something in each of our lives. Yeah. He don't want us just to come to church and no real a uh, relationship with him. Just, you know what I'm saying? So God wants to do something in us if we allow him. When he created Adam, he he didn't make them robots. So he gave us choice. He gave us choice whether we wanted to serve him. He said, come to me, you know? So I thank God for this time. I thank God for what Jesus done and that he came that we might have life and life more abundantly. Amen. 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 So I thank God for everyone here. I'm going to turn you back in the hands of our pastor. Let's receive him by the words of amen. Amen. so much thank you so much Jesus we cannot give you enough praise tonight Lord truly you are Emmanuel God with us. 
Thank you, God, tonight that we can, we can know, Father, you in a personal way. Tonight, Lord, I pray, Father, for hearts that are longing, Lord. For those that are searching, may they realize that the search is over. That there is a Savior that has been born in the city of David. And his name is Jesus. I pray right now, Father, I give you thanks for, for coming like you did, Lord. For knowing in advance, Father, the sacrifice, Lord, that you would make for us. That you would take the sins of the world, past, present, and future, on your body, Father. And you would die on a cross so that man could be restored in fellowship with the Father. That we could boldly come to your throne, Father, and find mercy and grace, Father, tonight. Lord, we worship you. And we thank you, Father, for this Christmas Eve, for this time of celebration, Lord. And Father, um, it is our heart, Father, to not go through the motions, Lord. As we've seen, Father, in, in your hand, how you have pruned, Father, the church back, Lord, so it can produce more fruit. God, we want to be those people you've called us to be, Father. We don't want to just come to church, Lord. We don't want to just come to Christmas Eve celebrations, Lord, and just go through the motions, Lord. We want to experience you, Father. We have felt you here so real tonight, Lord. You have been here. You have moved among us, Lord. You have walked among us, Lord. And we are so thankful, Father, for your presence, Lord. And in these closing moments, Father, as we just... Once again, sing a simple song of praise to you, Father. Would you receive all the glory? Would you receive all the honor and all the praise? We give you thanks, Lord. Be glorified, Father. Father, I pray for that one right now, Father, that is really longing in their hearts to know you, Lord. It says that if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us, Lord. And there, there's someone here probably that is, is longing for something that's real, Lord. And I pray, Father, that they know that all they have to do is say, I'm sorry. There's no specific prayer. There's nothing that has to be done. It's just, Lord, they just need to reach out to you and say, I'm sorry. And at that moment, Father, you choose to come into their hearts. You choose to forgive them of their sin and, and, and make them right with you, Father. And then there's those of us, Lord, that have known you for so long, Lord, that we sometimes need to say we're sorry also. That we've been so busy and wrapped up in so many things that are temporal, Father, and not eternal. Lord, we give you praise tonight. We thank you for salvation. We thank you, Jesus for being our King, our Savior, and our Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In just a few moments, the, they're going to come by and we're going to be giving you a candle. We're going to be singing a song of Silent Night together. And the lights will dim in a few moments, but we're going to just celebrate one more time with one last song. <laughs> Yeah. 